What if Eddie Brock lived in Spider-Man 3? What if events went differently? What if Eddie Brock didn't jump into the symbiote at the end of Spider-Man 3, blowing up with a pumpkin bomb? What if he lived? What would have happened? What would have changed? Find out in today's fan fiction. Just like our original timeline, events would be going out the same, and Peter would be able to use his webs and rip the symbiote off Eddie. Eddie would fall back onto the ground, but this time, something would change. Peter would raise his hand to catch a pumpkin bomb in the air, but nothing would come out of the glider. In this timeline, the glider would be severely damaged so much that half of the glider's features didn't work, making time actually stall, and now Peter was really in trouble. He was confused, but he knew that he didn't have enough time left, and Eddie would run and push Peter off of the building, and they were free-falling. The symbiote would also fall off the ledge, falling towards Peter and Eddie that were free-falling off the construction site. Peter would uses webs to catch Eddie in the nick of time, saving him from certain death. Peter knew Harry was dying, he didn't have much time. Peter, in a rage, would kick Eddie in the face, knocking him out cold. Peter would look around to see the symbiote. Where was it? He knew it was gone, or maybe it was dead, and the symbiote was the least of his worries at this point in time, and Harry was already dead when Peter ended up going back up to the construction site, and MJ would be crying, and she told Peter about his last words, and he would drop to the ground, kneeling and he would cry. Down below, Eddie would be crawling, trying to get back up. He knew that he was defeated, and Sandman would reform, looking at Eddie, and he knew that he made the wrong choice by joining Venom. Eddie would scream, telling Sandman to get him out of here, and that there was going to be a better opportunity to defeat Spider-Man. He would look at Eddie, and he would walk away. Sandman would make his way on top of the construction site, saying that he didn't want any of this, and that in his anger, he joined Venom, and he would explain what happened, just like the original timeline about Uncle Ben. Peter would still forgive Flint, and he would tell him that they were going to end this once and for all. Sandman would be confused, saying what he meant by that, and MJ would give Peter his mask, and he would put it on, and Sandman would also follow Spider-Man down to the construction site, and he would look at Eddie looking for him. He didn't know where Eddie was. He would scream at it off officer, telling them that if he had him in custody. The officer would tell Spider-Man that they ended up picking him up, putting him in a police car, and Spider-Man would pick up the officer, telling him to move out of the way, and then he could actually see Eddie Brock smiling in a cop car. The police would tell Spider-Man to stand aside and that they were going to handle the situation from here. Spider-Man, with no effort, would shove the rest of the cops out of the way, but the cops would point a gun at Spider-Man. He knew that he needed to make the right choice, and that was to let him go. Spider-Man would tell the police not to hurt Flint and that Flint knew what he needed to do and they would put him in jail and Flint would surrender to the police and Peter said that he'll find a way to help him out later but now he has to take care of things himself. Flint knew it was the right thing to do and he would go into the second police car and the police cars would move away. Eddie would be laughing in the police car and the police would tell him to shut up and that they've heard enough of this, but what they didn't know is that this was Eddie's plan all along. The symbiote had gone under the car following them just like how the symbiote followed Peter home and as they were heading up to the prison, the windshield would be filled with black and it would crack the glass. The car would be filled with symbiote and Eddie would be laughing, screaming yes, and he would kick the car door and the car door would go flying and the car would swerve out of control and it would pretty much crack and almost burn. Eddie would say we can't defeat him and Eddie would be confused on what was going on like we. It was talking to Eddie. The symbiote couldn't get the job done and that he was weak and only together with their power that they could finally defeat Spider-Man and he would scream and he would get bigger and bigger looking like the original Venom from the Amazing Spider-Man issue 300 the other cop car would actually stop and it would have Sandman in it and they would be looking at what was going on and they could see a giant venom on the road and he would rip the car door open, killing one of the cops and one of the other cops would take out a gun but his arm would be cut clean off and he would be thrown to the ground. Venom would scream at Sandman saying that he was a traitor and Sandman would say that he didn't want this fight and in the car he would summon a large fist and he would punch Venom far back into a car. Venom would be sent flying and the car would blow up and Venom would be on the ground crawling and burning. Sandman would scream saying that he couldn't be defeated and what more that he wanted from him. And Venom would be on the ground laughing and crawling and he would tell Flint, Don't you see? You just broke me out of prison, you fool. You can't escape crime. And Sandman would pick up the other police car and in his rage, he would throw it and there would be an explosion. He couldn't see Venom anywhere. Sandman would be looking around and then he could hear sirens coming closer and closer and he knew knew that he had to leave before Spider-Man or anyone else would show up. Venom was defeated, or was he? 
Like our original timeline, there would be a funeral for Harry Osborn and Peter and MJ would have that final dance at the end of Spider-Man 3, but would be interrupted by breaking news. The music at the club would stop and Spider-Man's spider sense would go off and he knew something wasn't right and he would walk towards the radio and he told them to turn it up a bit and somebody on the radio would explain that the Sandman had escaped police custody and that Eddie Brock had been killed in an explosion, but they still haven't found any remains at this time, so it's un clear if he ended up escaping or if he's dead. Peter in the club would drop to the ground and MJ would try helping him get back up. He would be stuttering, saying stuff. He'd let Uncle Ben's killer go off again. MJ would get Peter out of the club and Peter would look around in an alleyway seeing if anyone was around. Nobody was there and he would take MJ jumping very far, very fast and Peter would be walking around back and forth mumbling things and MJ would ask Peter if he was okay and what was wrong. During this time, Peter would have PTSD because of Harry's death and that how he could have used the symbiote in a more responsible manner, saying that it was his fault that Harry ended up dying. He would have a breakdown, saying that he should have never left the symbiote for Eddie and that he told MJ it was his fault Eddie got the symbiote and became Venom, leading to Harry's death. She would confront him, saying he wouldn't have been able to know that Eddie was at the church and that it wasn't his fault. She would tell Peter Harry made his choice to join in on the fight and that he risked his life to save him. She told him that that Harriet used great power and responsibility just like what he did and Peter would drop to the ground after hearing those words. He would make a fist knowing it was true and all the anger building up would be in him and Peter would ask how she knew of those lines and she would tell him that Aunt May ended up telling her like all of what happened and Peter would tell MJ that there was going to be an investigation and that he had to investigate Sandman and try to get more info on what was going on. He said maybe he can finish the job once and for all and then he would do one more final confrontation with Sandman. He would put his suit on, and during this, the suit would actually look more of like the classic Spider-Man 2002 suit with more of a Ditko look with new moving eyes. MJ would give Peter his mask, and he would put it on, and they would go swinging. Peter would go back to the apartment and he would open the door and he could see glass everywhere. It was broken into, the place was destroyed, and MJ couldn't believe it. She would say what happened and he didn't know what to think. Peter would inspect the room seeing claw marks on the wall and he would look at the closet to see his suits were all ripped to shreds. He would look at his old suitcase that the human spider suit was in and it was completely stolen. His other suits and materials were missing and he looked at a picture of him and Uncle Ben and it was completely scratched. Up. Peter didn't know what to make of this. He didn't know what was happening. Venom was back this fast. He would tell MJ something was wrong about these claw marks and that they were bigger than before. Peter would say Eddie knows all of his memories now and would yell Aunt May. Peter told MJ it wasn't safe for her anymore and that she needed to go to the nearest police station and that he would take his costume on and bring her to the station and they had to move quickly before anything else could happen. He would go to Aunt May's apartment and nobody was there but there would be a note. That the note would say, find me at the old warehouse, and that warehouse would be where it all started before on where he found his Uncle Ben's killer, or so he thought. Spider-Man would make his way to the warehouse, having old memories of what happened here all those years ago. He knew it looked different from the last time, and that they must have cleared the place up a little bit. He would hear a noise in the shadows. It was somebody struggling for air. He got closer and closer, and it was Aunt May. She was tied up with Symbiote. Spider-Man would crawl down there to see her, and he would rip the Symbiote off of her and she would ask Peter to look out and he would be confused on why she would say that but he had no time to think and he would be punched in the face and a symbiote whip would wrap around him throwing him to the ground and Spider-Man would be crawling trying to get to his feet and Venom would be laughing saying that there's no goblins to save him anymore and that this is where it all began and now this is where it's all going to end and that is going to be part one to what if Eddie Brock ended up living in Spider-Man 3 now we're going to into part two with Mysterio and Venom territory and Spider-Man 4 territory. So if you guys did enjoy this video, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn your notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But anyways, as always, peace out.